Nairobi, Kenya. Nerve center for the 1971 East African Safari Rally. Rough, tough, traditionally a car breaker, the rally that every European driver wants to win. But during the 18 years of the event, local drivers had taken all the honors. This year, a massive European entry, nearly three quarters of the total field, invaded Nairobi, intent upon wresting the safari title from local hands. Stuart Turner of Ford explains why the safari attracts so many major works teams. There are no marathon events this year, so the safari is the toughest, the roughest, and certainly the most heavily publicized event of the year. I think this is why all the major manufacturers are here. There's another challenge, and that is that it's never been won by a European driver, and this is one of the last prizes to be won by a European. I don't know why, we've hedged our bets, we've put three local drivers in our team. I think the best person to tell you why the locals always win is Jaginder Singh. Uh, the safari is one special stage, right from the start to the finish. And if you have to build a cut back, you will do well. But most of your European drivers go by every second. They work on every second, for every mile, for every hundred uh, mile, and every place, every control. And they keep on breaking their car. No, I think this could be the year of the European quite easily. There's a large entry of all the top class people from Europe. Lancia are here, Jackson have got Rano, this sort of thing. Uh, we've got three European drivers. I don't see any reason why we can't win. A confident Roger Clark. And for many of the local drivers, a European win seemed on the cards as teams received last minute route instructions. <laughs> I cannot emphasize too strongly that you have ahead of you over 4,000 miles of the worst roads that Africa can provide. Six hours across rugged country and African bush faced the crews leaving the Nairobi start. Their destination, Mombasa. A brief stop and it's on into the night with the prospect of breakfast in Dar es Salaam. And then, for survivors, the route turned west to Dodoma north to Arusha, and after almost 36 hours non-stop, back to Nairobi. And there you have it. Remember, this rally starts 20 miles outside Nairobi, here, when you leave the tarmac. Mm -hmm. The first stage was virtually 400 miles from Nairobi to Mombasa, demanding a 65 mile an hour average. For the cars, each rally mile meant the same as 100 on normal roads, making servicing a vital element in any bid for victory. from Nairobi, Yoginda Singh was already in trouble with his gearbox. Every minute late in Mombasa meant a penalty point, and this trouble lost him valuable time. We couldn't get any gear except reverse. We took the uh, gear lever off and just couldn't do anything. So we backed, reversed about uh, just over six kilometers back to the main road. We took the gearbox out, stripped it, repaired it, put it back, and it cost uh, four, uh, just over four hours. As Singh reversed four miles back to his service crew and a four-hour gearbox change, the Range Rover of Sprinzel sped past, heading for Mombasa, an even bigger problem.
Mombasa controlled. Official time in, 20 minutes to 7. But trouble on the road brought Sprinzel and co-driver Benson a crop of penalties in the Range Rover. First of all, we've got the chocolate section now, speedometer cable win. So we haven't got any uh, speedo, and that means the hull is gone, so we can't navigate by that. And a little bit later, the, we had a little fire under the dashboard, and um, all the dashboard lights went out, the fuse went, so we've got no lights to see from anyway. With the Range Rover searching for service assistance, the first cars were already pulling out of Mombasa. You've seen it, Stamp. Right, count down five, four, three, two, one. The Range Rover tried to reach its scheduled service point at Dar es Salaam. But the Nairobi scoreboard showed Sprinzel and Benson just couldn't make it. First gear, sort of but others were lucky. Last night we had a, the bolts which hold the engine mount into the engine. They disappeared for some reason. And we did the whole of the loose and bars, which was the interesting part of last night. Uh, with the engine lying like this. <laughs> last night, well, we got wet conditions anyway and um, well it felt it was terrible quite honestly it's slipping slithering all over the place last night it's the next section after that the Doma Arusha that's going to be the killer Tony Paul was right a blistering pace cut the field by half before the cars were anywhere near Nairobi the leaders began to emerge. Ahead on the road, although not on points, Mikola and Palm in an escort. Overall leaders, Herman and Schuler in a Datsun. Guard and Helmer leading a strong Porsche challenge. All of them averaging well over a mile a minute for the punishing southern loop. But it was still anybody's race. Guard Porsche had pulled ahead. Datsuns were second and third, with Mikola fourth in the escort. Six of the first ten were overseas drivers. Among the well-placed local entrants, Chris Bates looked ahead to the second leg. I'm not, I'm not going to say who's going to win. At the moment, the overseas people are very much in the ascendant, and they might, and then, and they might pull it off very easily. Already, it's apparent a lot of cars are having a lot of mechanical trouble, and. Um, there's no doubt that things aren't going to get any easier on the second leg. 